This is the third section, the elastic strings and springs section. And here we're gonna be looking at elastic energy. Now, if we have a, a spring, okay, we can either squash it or stretch it. Okay, so you, you can squash it or you can stretch it. Now, if you do either of those things, then work needs to be done. Okay, so work needs to be done either to squash a spring or to stretch a spring. Now, the way that we measure the amount of work that's been done in joules is this. Lambda x squared over 2L, where um, just like before, L is the natural length and um, X is the extension or compression. So extension, compression. Yeah, so work needs to be done to stretch or squash a spring with a string, obviously you can't squash a string, but with a, a string, uh, work needs to be done to stretch it. Okay, so like this is a fixed point here. Okay, so with our string, uh, we can only stretch it, can't squash it. And again, work needs to be done. And I've highlighted here the formula that gives us the work done in squashing or stretching a spring or string, and that's in joules. Now, when you squash or stretch um, a spring or you stretch a string, um, they have potential energy and it's called elastic potential energy. So you've got el energy stored up in that spring. When um, people take the um, springs from the sus front suspension of a car, they're really big, thick strings. They have to use a special tool to take them out because they're under compression and there's a load of energy stored in them because if they don't use a special spring, those uh, uh, special tool, those springs, when the energy is released, if they're taken out, they could cause serious damage to you as they try and spring back to their natural length because they're full of elastic potential energy. And if we want to work out the amount of elastic potential energy in a spring, okay, it's the same formula in joules so it's just one formula here yeah used for both things for the work done to stretch or squash uh, a spring or to stretch a string and the amount of energy stored in a squashed spring or a stretched spring and the amount of energy stored in a stretched string. So let's write that down. The amount of, we call it elastic potential energy. Elastic potential energy stored in a squashed stretched string, obviously not a squash string, spring. Okay, an elastic string has a natural length of 1.4 meters, so L is 1.4 meters. Uh, modulus of elasticity is six newtons. And uh, find the energy stored in the string when its length is 1.6 meters. So its extension is going to be 1.6 minus 1.4. So it's 0.2 meters, that's its extension. So that can go straight into the formula. So the energy stored equals uh, lambda x squared over 2L. So that will be uh, six times uh, 0.2 squared 
over 2 times 1.4. So let's work that out. 6 times 0 0.2 squared, 2 times 1.4, and I get 3 over 35 joules. Now um, let's change that to a decimal. Uh, and give that to three significant figures. So that's going to be naught point uh, naught, and then eight five seven joules. If we give that to three significant figures, okay. A light elastic spring has natural length naught point six, um, and a modulus of elasticity of ten. Right. So its natural length is naught point six. Modulus elasticity is 10 newtons. So find a work done in compressing from a length of 0 0.5 to a length of 0 0.3 meters. Now, on this question, you may have remembered from before when we did energy that the change in energy equals work done. And there's a change in energy uh, of the spring. Now we're going to work out the energy stored in the spring when its length was 0 0.5 meters. So 0 0.5 meters will work out the energy stored in the spring. Um, so remember our formula is lambda x squared over 2L. So when the spring is 2 meters long, oh sorry, half a meter long, so that'd be uh, 10 times by now its natural length is 0 0.6 meters so we have a compression of 0 0.1 meters so let's write that down compression of 0 0.1 meter so that's going to be 0 0.1 squared over 2 times its natural length 2 times 0 0.6 so if we work that out 10 times by 0 0.1 squared divided by 2 times 0 0.6 and we get 1 over 12. Now we're going to work out the uh, energy stored in the spring when its length is 0 0.3 meters. Now this time the spring will have a compression from its natural length compression of 0.3 meters so here we do 10 times 0.3 squared over 2 times 0.6 oh sorry this is 1 over 12 here so I don't know why I put a half 1 over 12 um, so 10 times by uh, 0.3 squared over 2 times 0.6 so that comes out to be 3 quarters so the work done is going to be the change in energy and it's changed from 3 quarters down to a twelfth yeah in compressing the spring so when we compress it, it actually got more energy in it it's got 3 quarter joules in this spring uh, when it only had a 12 joule. So remember work done is changing energy. So if we do three quarters, should be able to do this in my head really, minus a 12th, we get two thirds. So two thirds joules um, is the work done. Right, should now be able to do exercise 3C on pages 50 to 51. Uh, there's a recap of the information that's here. Uh, I suppose the only bit that's not there that might be useful is that change in energy equals work done. And we can work out the change in energy of a, a spring or, or string when we uh, compress it or we extend it, stretch it.